Hello friends, welcome back. Hope you're well. I'm in Luminar Neo today and I'm taking a photo that I consider a snapshot. This is something that I just took kind of a quick snap and what I'm going to do in this video is use a lot of the new tools in the most recent update to Luminar Neo and turn it into a vibrant, colorful, beautiful sunset, long exposure. It's basically all the things that it actually isn't. Uh, it's a lot of creative license, but I just want to show you these tools, how you can use them and how you can really transform an image. That's what we're doing today. Let's hit it, my friends. This is a photo from Amsterdam. It's a snap, right? So uh, I've already cropped it and I've already done develop raw and super contrast. So the photo started like that. And I basically just massaged the light a little bit with those two tools, which are generally speaking 99% of the time, essentially. I'm using those two tools first. And even with the update, with all the new tools, I'm still using develop raw and then super contrast first. It's a great way to balance the light. And I'll probably talk about workflow because uh, my workflow is changing in Luminar Neo, but um, I think those first two steps are going to stay the same. So having said that, what I want to do is create a vibrant, colorful sunset long exposure, like I said. So the first thing is I want to kind of create that sunset mood. Well, hey, Twilight Enhancer, new tools, super fun, really powerful, gives you a lot of capability to create that mood that I'm talking about. I'm going to use this mauve preset, and I think my Canadian and English friends say mauve. I've, uh, I've had that um, comment a couple of times. I say mauve. Uh, I think Americans say mauve. I don't know. It's not a common word, but whatever. It's kind of that purpley kind of look. Um, anyway, it's a, it's a color that I like, whatever, however you pronounce it. But you can see it immediately gives you that kind of sunset kind of feel, which I like quite a bit. Now, I'm going to play a little bit with the warmth, maybe give it a little bit more warmth, maybe a tiny bit in tint. And I'm going to leave Dawn, I think, about like that. I might actually go a little bit higher in size. Size basically moves that Dawn effect higher into the sky. So starting at the horizon, it kind of moves it up. I want to do a little bit uh, higher, so I dragged it a little bit to the right. But I'm going to keep the temperature warm because I do want it to be a vibrant sunset, which for me means a good bit of warmth in it. And I think in the scene section, I think I'm going to actually take shade slightly left. So if you go to the right, it's creating a little bit more darkness. I don't want to overdo. In fact, I want the photo to be a little bit brighter. So I'm going to do that. I'm not going to mess with water or mask refinement. Generally speaking, I think that's a good starting point. So before and after that tool, but it is a little bit dark. And so I'm just going to go back to develop and I'm going to lift the exposure a little bit. And that's a global adjustment. And then I'm going to lift the shadows some as well. Maybe something like that. Maybe pull the exposure back down. Uh, basically, it was just a little bit too dark. And for me, a sunset, especially when you have some of those brighter parts in the sky that you can see along the horizon, uh, you expect it to be brighter. And I don't expect the entire scene to be dark. So I'm making sure the entire scene isn't dark. So before and after, that's brightening, which... Uh, kind of overcame some of the darkness that the Twilight Enhancer added, but it kept the color, right? So I think that looks pretty good. Now that I've done that, speaking of color, I do want this to be a vibrant, gorgeous, you know, kind of saturated sunset. So for me, I'm going to go to Color Harmony, a tool that I love, absolutely adore, frankly, and use it all the time. So I'm going to come in here and just bump up the brilliance a little bit, uh, bump up the warmth. And in fairness, whenever I use these tools, it's purely experimentation. There's not like a formula for me in Color Harmony. Every photo is different. Everything is just move sliders, experiment, see how it looks and see if you like it. Uh, and you can always go back and adjust it, right? You can just go into the Edits tab, reopen this tool, make adjustments if you feel like you want or need to. Now I'm going to take cool, a little bit cooler, warm, a little bit warmer. So maybe something like that. And then I'm going to play a tiny bit with the midtones, maybe a little bit of red in the midtones. And then I'm going to go into Highlights, and maybe do a little bit of red, maybe a little bit of magenta. You can see that's picking up the color in that sky really nicely, which I like. And I think in the shadows, I might add a tiny bit of blue. So just a little bit. And I think, I think the color's looking pretty good overall. So before and after. Now that I've done that, I'm gonna close this tool and I'm gonna go into Water Enhancer, another new tool, which is super fun, and just allows you to very quickly go in and just grab the water, well, it grabs it for you, frankly, uh, and make adjustments to it. And it's just, it's just a lot of fun. So you can see I've uh, gone to amount 30. The water's already turned blue, and it's heavily blue because the blue slider is uh, defaulting to 50. I'm going to pull that down. I don't want to overdo the blue because it is sunset, and it should be picking up some of that warmth. I'm going to work on that here in a minute. I might give it a little bit of green and maybe even a little bit of the original color. 
So let me just look at that. So before and after i like that it's a little bit bluer and you know the sun is below the horizon behind the buildings effectively so i don't expect a lot of direct light right on the uh um, on the water so I, I think it's fine to have it be a little bit darker and a little bit cooler i mean that looks natural to me i guess for lack of a better term but i love water enhancer because i can come in and adjust those tones pretty pretty quickly and uh, i'm a fan of adjusting tones uh, now, the other thing that's really great about this new update is Luminosity Mask. And I want to go back in and play a little bit more with the colors. And this time I'm going to go into Color Harmony again, so second use of it, but this time with a Luminosity Mask instead of just applying it globally like I did last time. So Luminosity, if you need a refresher on this or you're not familiar with Luminosity Mask, I've got a pretty detailed video about it right there, which... Uh, has been, um, you know, got a lot of interesting uh, comments and feedback and a lot of people saying that it helped them with it. So um, here's something I like to do with Luminosity Mask, and that is I kind of target the mid-tones. There's, you know, every photo is not exactly like this, but a lot of photos have a lot of mid-tones in it. And so anything in this section is uh, where you're getting 100% of the mask. And so because it's concentrated in the middle of this kind of uh, line where it starts on the shadows on the left and it goes to highlights on the right, the center, by definition, is essentially the midtones, And so doing something like this, I'm kind of isolating the full effect of whatever adjustments I make to that narrow band or narrow range of um, midtones. But I've got a generous fade into the shadows on this side, right? So I'm getting nice fade into the shadows. It just won't touch all the shadows, which is fine. And I've also got a nice generous fade here where I'm fading. As you can see, when I back up and start fading it, it's fading into the highlights. And I like that. I want it to fade into the highlights. I don't really want it to get into these bright areas because I'm going to add a little bit of warmth and I think it's warm enough there. So that's one thing I like to do with Luminosity Mask when I want to do kind of a overall little bit of bump, but I don't want it to be too heavy handed. I concentrate on the midtones with a generous fade to each edge and then go make my adjustments. And speaking of adjustments, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to do something similar, a little bit more brilliance and a little bit more warmth. So this is going to warm up some of those other areas, primarily the mid-tones. Again, generous fade into the different areas. I'm going to add uh, anything that is warm is going to get warmer when I drag split color warmth. This warm slider to the right will make them, uh, the warm stuff warmer. And if I take the cool slider to the left, it makes the cool stuff cooler. You can kind of see that. I don't want to do too much of that. Uh, so maybe just a touch there. And then I'm going to go into mid-tones because remember I heavily targeted the mid-tones. And maybe just do a tiny tiny bit of warmth. You can see how that's kind of picking up a lot of the buildings uh, and maybe a tiny bit of magenta. Uh, I think something like that. So that's a nice little tip to give you a gentle application of whatever edit across a decent amount of the photo, but not all of it. Heavy uh, concentration in the midtones, generous fade to both the shadows and the highlights gives you a nice little touch. So before and after, you can see, maybe you can't see too much on the video, but it's a gentle kind of subtle pop in color. So before and after. It's a nice little trick I like to use quite a bit. Now, I promised you guys a long exposure, and this is not a long exposure. This was a snap. It's rough water, and you've probably seen me before go into structure and mask in the water and then go negative, right? Negative structure. I use it all the time to smooth out water, and it works well a lot of the time. It doesn't work on water like this because that water is too choppy for structure to be able to smooth it out. But I have a trick for you. There's another way to do it and another tool which works wonders, and that's the blur tool. So I'm going to go into blur, and in this case, I'm going to get a mask, and this is where I use object select, another new tool in Luminar Neo's most recent update. Object select will allow me to quickly come in, hover over the water, click it once, grab it, and there's my mask for the water. I'm literally done. It's that quick and that powerful, and it's 90, high 90% 90 accurate. I mean, there's a little touch up I could do if I wanted. I'm not going to mess with it. I'm now going to go in and make this water smooth. Before I do that, I want to point out there's trash in the water. I didn't clean that out. And the reason why is I'm going to use a motion blur. And the motion blur, I'm going to go pretty high, like in the 80s. And that blurs out everything, including the trash. So I didn't even need to remove it. But if you look at it, this is a canal in Amsterdam. The water is going up and down, kind of from our point of view, it's going up and down. It's kind of going north and south. Well, this water is now going east-west, right, because of the motion blur. That's where the angle slider comes in. In this case, I just take the angle to negative 90, 
And I've now got a nice long exposure that's vertically oriented. So I'm getting this nice long drawn out shadow or reflections here of all these buildings. And it creates that nice long exposure look without having to really do anything. I mean, object select, grab the water for me. I dragged this slider and that slider and that was it. Oh, I clicked the word motion. I mean, that was seconds of work. And this is stuff that used to just take so much time. That's what I love about uh, all this updates and all the tools in Luminar Neo. So if you look at the water before, it's a snapshot. I told you, I'm making a, some art, if you will, visual art out of a throwaway photo, you know, objectively. It's my photo and I like it, but nothing great about it in fairness, but it's turning into something that's a lot more interesting. So there it is. That long exposure just works so, so well. And now I want to go do a little bit more with color. And so I'm going to go into toning this time. And I think what I want to do is go into object select again and just grab the water one more time because I feel like it needs a little bit more warmth to kind of more accurately mirror what's going on in the sky. So I went into masking, object select, click the water. I've got it. And I'm just going to start with highlights and I'm just going to drag this. Uh, if you know toning, you know this far left is kind of the red. So I'm just going to leave it there. I'm going to drag that a little bit to the right and I'm going to try the same with shadows. Yeah, you can see I'm picking up a little bit of that color and maybe not quite that much and maybe a little bit less in highlights. 59 is pretty high, but I just want to give it a little bit more warmth. So if you look at the before and the after, and a lot of that blueness in fairness came from the water enhancer tool. So I could probably back down on the blue there, but I wanted to give it a little bit more color and that blue helped. And then I can come adjust kind of what the blue looks like by using toning with object select. Uh, it's me just stacking tools. And as you stack things, these cumulative edits really do add up as you're seeing, I guess, in this photo. But if you look at the before and the after, a little bit warmer, a little bit better look overall. And I think that's really it. I mean, I'll probably just wrap up with a vignette, come in and do something where I want to, you know, kind of focus the center, uh, focus on the center of the photo. Inner light is great at that. So it gives you a nice little pop. And I want to feather that a little bit. And maybe I'll make it a, a little bit rounder as well. Something about like that. So if you look at the before and the after the vignettes, it's really concentrating your view. I did not choose subject simply because I think dead center, which is where it defaults, is just fine here. So again, before and after vignette. And that's my edit, my friends. Let me show you what we started with in case you've forgotten. Dull, dark, just blah, boring, quick snap, trash in the river, not a lot going on in the sky. But you're able, with all these tools, to quickly and easily, quite frankly, turn it into something that's a lot more reminiscent of like a art piece, right? Visual art. It's not real. I'm the first to admit that I've enhanced this photo quite a bit. And I'm going to use air quotes on enhance. You may or may not like it. That's fine. But the point is, these tools give the ability to do so, so much, so, so quickly and easily that you can just get things done and turn throwaway photos salvage them, turn them into something that might be really visually appealing to you. That's one of the fun things I'm doing in Illuminar Neo these days, my friends. Hope it gives you some ideas. Thanks for watching. I'll be back soon with more videos. You guys take care of yourselves. I'll see you next time. And until then, adios.